I'm hearing destination unknown. Mm -hmm. That's the, the wise for me to let myself go wherever it leads me. Okay. Traversing time. Interconnecting all solutions, all solutions, all are here, right here. All solutions for all the problems are right there where the problems are. Your society was uh, was created. Did your society have a concept of problems, or had the races before yours transformed the entire concept of problems? Thank you for your question. It is very much dependent on the definition of the problem. Right. I guess in, in Earth society, we have that feeling of like, okay, there's this, this thing happening in our world. There's a lot of challenge. Maybe there's like limitation or negative energy surrounding it. And we have to come together to overcome it. Your yes. society, yes, you have. Yes. Okay. Often in your society, you Define problem as something that is difficult to solve. And that's why we started this channeling with with this notion that problem and a solution is one thing. Because all is one thing. So we, problem cannot be separated from the solution and if you define problem that way then your definition would be closer to work challenge or right something to discover about yourself right mm. thank you for that that was very that was very beautiful thank you our society is Our society was formed when we were the first delivered to our planet as a sun. As you know, we are hybrids. And we couldn't become what we are without the assistance of others, without interference, the beings that could provide ground and base for our development.
So it was chosen. And the creation of our society was initiated when we were still not incarnated in our hybrid bodies. This was the plan. We will work as one society, but until a certain point we were unaware that how much we are connected. In this moment was the awakening of Shakana, which was the individual born into our society, who immediately had all the knowledge of our society. And he or she, because it was androgenous being, he realized this interconnectedness, interconnectedness with everything. And as he realized, we all instantly became one. And from that point on, we are all telepathically linked. Does that answer your question? <laughs> it more than answers my question. <laughs> it was like answering my question and then giving me like a hundred presents. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for receiving your presents. <laughs> and I'm talking them. We thank you very much for your willingness to serve us, our channel. You are very gifted. Natural. The gift comes, of course, from yourself. Thank you. And the gift is to let go, allow and know that you are good enough to let this be your reality. And we have a little advice for you as to how to bypass your belief system. Initial state in every moment, an initial state of the consciousness of the universe of all that is of God, if you wish to call it that. The initial state is knowingness, existence and knowingness. It has to become unknowingness for there to be experience. Not that knowingness wouldn't be experience by itself, the experience of getting to know
the experience of being the center of the experience. So that there must be first separation from the knowingness. And instead of you believing that you are it all, you need to limit yourself by the belief that you are separated from the rest. That there is here and there, that there is outside of you. And that gives you the experience of being the center of it all. So in this centeredness, you are still one. And your belief systems, other than there is projected outside of me, where I can receive the information from, which is actually inside of me, projected out. The knowingness that you can receive any information at all, even contradictory to your belief system, that will allow you to go around, to let the beings that want to talk To say with even less words, more. Does this make sense? I think I understood a lot of it, of going past belief into understanding the knowingness, and then the knowing the knowingness. Know that you know. That is the key. Know that you know. I love it, man. Know that you don't need to know what you know. But you know that you know it. Whoa, thank you. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, I know. Thank you. I know now. <laughs> thank, geez, thank you. Thank you for your huge expansion that is being felt far, far throughout the cosmos. Oh man. It feels like this last few days has been a forgetting of knowingness, you know, it's felt that way, but it's very refreshing. And that's exactly what it may feel like when you surrender to your greater knowing. Yes. You then know that you are the experience right here. In the Whatever you need right here must be right here. And whatever is right here must be your to experience, must be yours to wow. use. Wow. Oh, man. You will then allow much more into through yourself, into your experience. If you don't discount anything that is coming, be it emotion, be it thought, be it unexpected sound or occurrence outside, seemingly outside of you. That is all you speaking to yourself. 
in the language that you could understand. It's all symbolic. And these are your symbols for you to translate them positively if you wish, positively if you are willing to. But you can also choose the negative interpretation always. That is the freedom. That is what makes you free. To know that everything that seems, however in negative it seems, that you can, that what seems it might destroy you, use positively and it could completely transform you. The stronger is the negative interpretation, the stronger can be the positive one and the positive experience as well. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right. So are you saying, are you saying to give more energy to the positive, to allow for the negative interpretations to fall away? You have absolute control and freedom of interpretation. Right. Right. You are absolutely free to interpret anything as anything. May I ask for your interpretation um, of a dream that I recently had? Yes, of course. Thank you. I um, was in a dream where uh, an airplane was crashing and I was in the airplane. <laughs> and I was, uh, it was very vivid. I could see the lights flashing. There was an emergency announcement. Um, I could see other passengers on the plane. And I looked outside the window of the plane, but before I looked outside, I, I came into a state of acceptance. I was like, okay, like if I die here, that's what's supposed to happen. It's okay, I'll, I'll go on. Then I started to go into a strong amount of trust as well as a simultaneous searching for an exit for a way to leave the situation. And I looked out the window and I saw um, the plane was over water and I could see the skyline of a city. Um, and I was aware of, you know, the, the environment the plane was in. <coughs> yeah. And as I became aware of this, I shot out of body in the dream and began to fly. And I flew upwards and upwards and upwards until I uh, woke myself um, up. So I, yeah, so I was wondering if you could share your interpretation um, of this. Yeah. First obvious thing is that you have found the exit that you were looking for. Isn't it so? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Do you think you can use that same feeling of finding your exit and getting out of your body? Do you think you can use that in your day-to-day -day reality and in your dream state other times? Yes, yes, I think if I strengthen my awareness of this while awake, I'll be able to do it while I'm dreaming more effectively. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. You are never, never really actually out of your body. Your body is in your consciousness. And usually, your consciousness is in the center of your body. But it is 
translate it to the place where you feel you are looking from. So if you focus in the place where you are looking from, and it's not the place that you could point to or get to, it's the place where you are. It will lead you smoothly. into the knowingness and you could at that place if you don't walk away and try to get somewhere else try to focus on something outside if you stay there You will realize it's inside your heart and you are just projecting your awareness up and out. Then you are out of body and through your body. You are the outside of your body through your body through that point of connection, where you are looking from. Essentially, essentially using the heart as the launch pad, you could say, for out of body experiences. Because as you were describing it, the place I'm looking from, the place I became aware of was immediately the heart, heart center. Very nice. Then you're there. Then you're home. This is your home. It is the feeling of home. You are your heart. You are the energy of your heart. Then your heart, your physical heart, is translating that energy in generating your emotions. And if you don't filter that energy through negative belief systems, through the belief systems that tell you there is only one choice and that you are not good enough for something better, Ooh. then when that energy is not filtered through those belief systems. You can only feel it as positive emotions. But if you hold on to negative interpretations as if something could be against you, as if you were not unconditionally loved, then you might feel emotions or feelings, the translations of those original emotions that are unpleasant. So whenever you feel unpleasant feeling, you know that you are filtering it through the negative belief system. And you can unlock from the negative interpretation, the negative assumption. Yes. And look for something better. Open yourself to something better. And today that is enough. Looking, you can look by not needing to look for it. Because when you stop looking for something, that's when, that's when you found it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you are there, you are at home. You are home. Know that. Yes. And operate from that knowingness always. If you so choose, that is our advice for you. And you might be surprised by little fears, 
popping up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and struggling for survival. Love them, love those fears. Tell them, I love you. We are one. There's no need to attack. No attack. Don't attack. Be absolutely without defense. Harmless. Nothing can harm you. Nothing is against you. Everything that is here is here with you, for you, to co-create with. If you have no further questions or statements for us that we could comment on, we will say quite for now. I, I wish to thank you sincerely for what you have shared. It was very timely and um, it was very well received. Um, from all of Earth, from all of humanity, uh, one heart, we, we send our love to you. And I thank you for uh, sharing your wisdom with me and reflecting my own knowingness to me. Uh, infinite gratitude and appreciation. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for your willingness to listen. And that is all that is needed. <sighs> and one more comment about survival. the survival, the energy that you call survival. The panic that will save you. is built in, into experience. So that you so that you would appreciate your individuality, your uniqueness. You want to preserve yourself to go on with this experience mm-hmm. of discovery. Yes. And that is the basis of energy of survival. So survival is positive. It includes you into experience. Mm. So then you don't need to translate even panic as the fear as anything negative. It's actually mechanism, mechanism that you chose to have you focus right here and now and use everything that is there for you to use regardless of the connections, associations, consequences, and experiences that you had before. There is no before. And if you want, if you want to continue to believe there is, no that before needs to be completely different from the now. 
else it wouldn't be before, it would be now. Did that translate? It did. It did. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. And as, and as patience, as patience, as the energy of patience, you are also aligning with your knowing. There's no need for patience when you know. Include everything into your heart energy. It is there. Your heart is beating as one with everything. We are all sharing one heart, as you said. Thank you. And welcome to New You. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>